A massive 8.9 earthquake struck just off the northeast coast of Japan around 2.46 on March 11, 2011. The earthquake damaged many buildings with a great loss of life. It also triggered a large tsunami that inundated the east coast of Japan, resulting in a huge loss of life with many thousands still missing. The tsunami was observed as far away as San Francisco, California, USA, and kilometers from the epicenter. They received quake and flood damage. It was reported the automatic safety system that normally shuts down the reactor in the event of a quake did not activate. Power was lost to the main cooling pumps. Backup diesel generators failed after about an hour. Then pumps were run from battery backup for four to five hours. It typically takes 24 to 48 hours to cool a core from a shutdown with cooling. The first few hours are critical. With the loss of coolant, reactor cores temperatures rise quickly, resulting in the release of radioactive steam or worse. The longer the core is without cooling, the risk of explosion, ejecting core material, and the potential for core meltdown is very real. March 12th, a huge explosion was observed coming from the crippled reactors. The dark color of the cloud indicates more than just steam was released. Plant operators and emergency personnel are working hard to get the reactors cooled. Radioactive cesium and iodine have been reported indicating the Fukushima reactor number one is about 100 times larger than the graphite moderated core at the reactor in Chernobyl. At this time, we don't know if a meltdown has occurred in reactor number one. We pray the brave personnel can avert a meltdown. At this time, reports of desperate attempts to use seawater are underway to avert a disaster. Observations of a second explosion and a meltdown of reactor number two have been reported. Prevailing winds will tend to carry the radioactive cloud towards Alaskan islands, mainland U.S. and Canada. Depending on wind speed and direction, the fallout could reach Alaskan islands in three days and western Canada, U.S. in five days and spread over the rest of the country in seven to ten days. Radioactive cesium and iodine particles will be deposited on vegetation and crops downwind and is a risk to humans and livestock. Radioactive iodine is particularly dangerous to the thyroid and children. Reported 14th of March, more explosions, cooling issues of reactors number 1, 2, and 3. Number 3 uses a MOX fuel, a mixture of uranium and plutonium dioxide. Officials in Japan are distributing iodine pills and expanding the evacuation area. U.S. Navy ships downwind from the reactors have detected radiation offshore and have moved a greater distance away for safety. We in Canada and U.S. are now downwind. Anticipating radioactive iodine exposure? Potassium iodate must be taken before exposure. Also, regularly eating foods high in iodine like kelp is beneficial to load the thyroid with good iodine and other trace elements. Bromine from pesticides and foods looks like iodine to the body and is toxic to your thyroid. Having a supply of potassium iodate on hand is cheap insurance in, if, in the event of a dirty bomb or nuclear accident. Are you a frequent flyer, medical professional, expecting mother, a security officer, work with radiation, or just concerned about your health? Check out the new InstaDose, high accuracy, low cost, digital direct reading dosimeter. Basically, a miniature Geiger counter in the size of a USB memory stick. You can, you can read it anytime by simply plugging it into your computer. No shipping and waiting for results. In addition to natural background radiation, we are exposed to more medical, dental, and now cancer-causing and intrusive airport x-rays and millimeter wave machines. For your health, it's always best to minimize your exposure to radiation particularly ionizing particles and x-rays. To reduce your exposure, you can increase your distance from the source, add shielding materials such as walls or protective clothing, and minimize your exposure time. This applies to all radiation sources. If you have any questions, you can reach me, Jeff, at Rocky Flats Gear at 888-X-Ray Knot or direct at 702 five six zero zero two two one or email jeff at rocky flats gear dot com or our web address www dot rocky flats gear dot com thank you
including medical x-rays and now de uh, airport scanners. Again, my prayers are with the people of Japan and the brave emergency and power plant operators. We hope they get through this quickly and with minimal loss of life.